All right, guys, quick video to show you a tool I made in Maya that will help you automate motion path setups, specifically motion paths that require fully populated curves, such as tank treads. I called it Motion Chain, and you can grab it from my website, totally free, uh, no sign up bullshit as usual, just grab it from the link that I'm going to put below, uh, drag it into your Python tab, the script editor, select all the text and middle click drag it to your shelf. A uh, little button will pop up, click that and you'll get the UI. So this scene here might seem familiar, it's from the part one tank rig tutorial, the treads. So I'm going to use this to show uh, how the tool works. Uh, so the first uh, section here is the name of the attribute that drives the entire sequence. So default name is cycle. Uh, in the actual tank rig tutorial, it was actually called tread cycle. But I'm going to leave it like this for now, and I'll uh, fix that in a moment. The second option here is the curve path. So we can just select our curve path and hit set curve path. And this just adds the name in this box right here. You can manually add it if you want, but that just speeds things up. The up object, which was the object that stops all tread pieces from flipping. That needs to be selected next and you set that the same way. Or you can manually type it in if you're crazy. Uh, these options here will allow you to manipulate the orientation of the objects that are going to be on your curve. Uh, these are listed the exact same way as the uh, options in the original motion path option box, like the original tool that comes with Maya. Um, then when you're all done setting that up, which I deliberately set up a little bit wrong here, we'll see why in a moment. Grab all of your pieces and hit populate curve. And you'll see that all of the tank treads are spaced out and we'll work with our up object. I've deliberately actually flipped these the wrong way around to show you these uh, other attributes that get created. So cycle was the attribute that drives everything, which is this one here. So if you hold control, middle click, drag, uh, you can drive that uh, tank tread. Front twist, up twist, and side twist will allow you to correct twisting or flipping or whatever you want that you didn't catch in these options right here. And it's also something you can animate too. This tread cycle attribute was the one that was originally on our tutorial locator here. In this situation, I would have just literally put in the tread cycle name and reused this attribute so this one wasn't created. I mean, you could just delete this one in this situation, but we'll do it this way just so you can see how it should be. This is the actual attribute name. You can just move it in the channel box there to, to show the real name. Slightly different in the channel box. And you can just paste it in here. So we'll do the other side. We're going to grab the curve, set the curve path, set the up object, and this time we're going to invert the Y up axis. But one thing I should mention with the tool is save your work before you use it because it works really well, but it doesn't undo very well. So yeah, make sure you save your work. If you undo everything as a whole, shit breaks. There's just nothing good to be said about what happens when you undo it. You should test it. So yeah, save your work. And if you want to test these things here, just use one object and then hit populate curve. And everything's looking good. It's the way that you want it. And just undo it, select them all again, and then populate it. That way you won't run into any issues. Now we can use our tread cycle attribute now. So hold control, middle click, drag, and we can uh, see it moving. And again, we have our front twist, up twist, side twist attributes as well, for whatever reason, if you need them. That will hopefully speed you up. Actually, hopefully it will definitely speed you up in doing that part one tutorial. Sorry about not putting out there earlier, but I really wanted to have you guys do it manually first because that's the way I learned. So having a tool to do it all, you're not going to learn anything. You're just going to push a button. But that tutorial is literally how this tool works. So apologize for anyone who's actually gone through the grueling pain of doing those things manually. But again, that's how I learned and it was a great way of learning. So now you know specifically how this tool works. So please don't hate me for that. Come on. Uh, this tool is not super exclusive for tank treads. You can use it for lots of other things that require a fully populated curve that moves with a uh, single attribute. So another example that I have set up here is a car. Let me just hide this stuff. Kind of like the airflow on a car, like a graphical representation of the way the air would move along the contours of a car. You know, let's uh, let's set that up real quick. So I'm going to grab the curve, grab our up object and set that. I'm just going to rename this attribute to cycle. I'm going to grab our arrows here and hit populate. We'll do the same thing for all of these and hit populate. 
I'm gonna do the last two here. Be real quick. Set the up object and select your objects. All right, now the reason I did four was just to show you that you can use them all together. So in this situation, we've created a graphical representation of the way air would flow on a car's surface as it's driving. So that's just another way you can use this tool. So it's pretty useful. One extra thing I will mention, and this goes for the, the tank stuff too, is if you actually select your curve here after the fact, after everything's set up, and you want to reverse the direction of everything, if you need to, for whatever reason, so say we did this the wrong way around, uh, you can do it after the fact by just going to your modeling tab or surfaces or whatever, and there's a reverse direction tool. If you just click that, it flips that for you, and everything still works, which is pretty cool. So that's the end of this video. If this tool is going to be useful to you, please like the video. If you want to see more tutorials and uh, more tools like this, please subscribe. I really enjoy the whole subscribing process because it's allowed me to communicate with um, so many different riggers because I personally don't know that many riggers. So it's been great uh, communicating with people of a like mind. So thanks a lot for that. I'll see you in the next video, which is going to be a tutorial for a machine gun. So we're going to be using this tool to create bullet chains and shell case ejection. So it's going to be set up the exact same way that I set up the machine gun in the advanced tank rig 2.0 video. So check that out if you're not sure what I'm talking about. So hopefully we'll meet again in that tutorial. Thanks for watching and I will see you later.